Hi, how you doing? I'm here with my very dear old friend, Bay Logan. Hi, Cindy. And we haven't seen each other for quite a few years. Uh, they got us over to England when I was performing with the New York City Wushu team, and at the time he was the editor of Combat That's Magazine. Right. Yes. All right, he was writing, and now Bay has gone on to be uh, the owner, the director, we could even say chief bottle washer That's it. of That's his right. own magazine, and I'm so proud of him, uh, Impact. And so now while Bay is here in New York, I grabbed him aside, and he's here to give us um, an eye opening view on the martial art action movie scene. Right. All right, terrific. Okay. Welcome, Bay, to New Thank York. You. Thank Great you. Thank you for having me. You. Very pleased to be here. Okay, so I think our viewers would like some of the the ins and outs of the business that, that they haven't been privy to see, that you've been privy to see. Right. Why don't you tell us about what Impact is really about first? Well, Impact was a, a magazine devoted entirely to action movies, and, and by its nature, it's become to be about martial arts action movies, because so many of the leading men and ladies of the time are martial artists. You know, you've got Arnold and you've got Stallone, who are not, but who have martial arts in their films. And then you have Van Damme, Seagal, Dolph Lundgren, late Brandon Lee, Cynthia Rothrock, and everybody else is in the martial arts. So it's an action film that kind of veers towards martial arts because of the nature of the industry. And we felt there was also a big market to write about people who maybe weren't big theatrical stars. People like Don Wilson, Cynthia Rothrock, Bolo Young, uh, even Jackie Chan, people who didn't have big theatrical hits. And also we thought there might be a market for uh, coverage of people who are ne not necessarily theatrical stars, but they have a big video market, people like Don Wilson, Cynthia okay. Rothrock. Bolo Young, where they really haven't had big theatrical hits, but they, they've got a lot of followers on the video scene. Right, okay, well, the magazine looks fabulous. It's Thank beautiful, you. glossy yeah. colored, gorgeous color pictures. And I noticed while I was thumbing through, there's the, the cover of these video covers look, they have got these, they look great. They've got these guys that we've never seen, like right. if the camera can pick this right. up. This is a, a gentleman named Gary Daniels. Sure. Oh, he's cute. He's British. Oh, he's British. True okay. Brit. Now, now this is like an obviously, you know, well-made film. What's the story? Is this a video film? Is it sold in videos? It's How did this get made? That film was made by, <coughs> by a company called PM Entertainment, who, who make films pretty much in the way that the old studios used to, uh, in a kind of a factory method. They have a very set formula to how much money they spend and how the people they use and the kind of films that they make. Now, in America, we're kind of spoiled because we do have big blockbuster films made in our own language. But other countries, they don't really care what language the films are in because okay. they're going to be dubbed Just into Spanish. Just love the action. Yeah, right. Okay. And in those territories, these films might play theatrically. But in America and England, increasingly, unless you have a budget and a star, you're right. going to be, or, or it's an art film, okay. you're going to be on video. So these films are being made in America and England, primarily for the video market, but in the rest of the world, possibly theatrical as well. Now, are these people, these uh, actors, are they ever going to come over to the mainstream American market? Do you know, it's like it, these careers, you can never tell which way it's going to go. The one direction is that you're like Van Damme and you do a few of these low-budget movies that are well-received. Somebody says, wow, this guy's so hot, he shouldn't be doing low-budget, he should be a big star like Arnold, and he goes up into the big leagues. There are other people like okay. Don Wilson and people like that who, who uh, are in the video market and the one reason Don keeps doing these films is because he, he's very good at marketing himself to the video shop owners. They love him. So they're always saying to the producers, gee, do us another Don Wilson film because we'll take 50 units or 50,000 units or whatever they buy okay. in. We want Don Wilson. Okay. And I would think that because he's done so many low budget films and a big Hollywood producer is unlikely to say, gee, we'll put him in a film, because even if you've spent 20 million on the movie, people are going to expect it to be a video film. Do most of these actors uh, live in the United States or in Europe and go to Hong Kong then to constantly find work? Um, Hong Kong is like a stepping off point on the way to trying to make it in Hollywood. And I think that the European people who've come over here, like Van Damme, like um, Gary Daniels may or may not have worked in Hong Kong movies. Actually, both of those gentlemen have. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a stopping off, a detour mm -hmm. en route to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But I think that most people take as their idols somebody like Arnold, somebody like Van Damme, uh, who kind of came from a foreign country and mm -hmm. overcame all these difficulties okay. all right. uh, in Hollywood. Now, these actors, I, well, I see them, I love the movies, uh, they're, they're full of action and sure. they're full of martial arts. And it really doesn't come close to the action that's in the, you'd say, the American films. Are these films 
more dangerous? Do these people do most of their own fighting? What's the story? Well, I, you know, I've worked in Hong Kong uh, in producing films with my partner Mark Houghton, who's based over in Hong Kong, and it is a whole different approach to to filmmaking. I mean, in, I always say in Hollywood, when all is said and done, more is said than done, and in Hong Kong, it's the opposite. You know, more is done than said, mm -hmm. and they make films at this trip hammer pace. They shoot them silently. I mean, one reason there's so much action in a Hong Kong movie as opposed to an American one. Whenever you do a film in America, it's normally shot sinks out and there's quiet on the set. So it's all pretty lame and tame. In Hong Kong, it's shot wild. There's no soundtrack being recorded as the action happens. Mm. And so you've got about 50 guys going, jump higher, jump higher, back a bit, left a bit. No, no, you idiot. Spin, spin. So it's no wonder there's more action because there's all this stuff happening on the set while they're filming it. And I think that's one of the reasons that um, that's one, just one example of the way the philo filmmaking philosophy is different. In America, you've got one director that's it. He oversees everything. In Hong Kong, you've got like one director who might direct the acting, another action director, maybe a stunt director, and maybe even these guys will not be on the set when the others are working. They'll go home. So you've okay. got a guy comes in who's very good with drama, and another guy to do the stunts, another guy to do the fighting. So there's a whole different filmmaking philosophy. That's why it's so hard to compare.